Hello EMS, it's Mrs. Mancuso again from the School Counseling Office and today I'm here with Ms. Shea who is the head of the Art Department. So thank you for being with us today. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Hi everybody. So can you just talk to us a little bit about the art program in general at OA and everything that there is included in that? Yes. Um, we are an art department of two teachers so we have several courses that we offer. Um, the biggest one that we offer is the full year class, which is Art One Foundational Art Workshop. So it's called Foundational Art Workshop. So you get like a comprehensive introduction to art. And if you finished art in eighth grade, it will really kind of roll you right into it. But it's a little bit more intensive than that. And it lets you get ready for all the other courses that we offer mm -hmm. as well. Um, and then from there, we also have some specialized courses um, like ceramics, mm. sculpture, graphic design, digital imaging, which is a fancy name for digital photography. Um, and those are half year classes. So you would get to experience those throughout your time here as well. But I would really recommend taking the um, Art One Foundational Art Workshop mm. first because it gives you all the knowledge and skills that you need to have mm -hmm. um, in order to be able to thoughtfully do those half year courses. Um, and then in your sophomore year, you can take um, courses that we offer that are also full year classes. Um, so we have Art 2, mm -hmm. which is called Media and Methods, and it's called that because you get to try out all kinds of different mediums and really experiment. And then we have Art 3, which is Advanced Composition and Drawing, and that's an honors level class. Um, and you really start to hone your skills and start to come in with um, your own real vision and voice into your work. And then Art 4 is Advanced Studio, and you're the ad most advanced crew in the building at that <laughs> point. Um, and you really just get to create the body of work that you want to create, and um, you make lifelong friends with your four years of people that you mm. stick with, too, which is really nice. Sounds great. Yeah. And I don't know if any of you have been up to the high school at all, but there's fantastic artwork all over the building. Mm -hmm. So if you've been up here or if you're coming up for a tour, definitely check out the wall space because there's a ton of like amazing work that's done by current art students here and former art students actually. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's pretty exciting. So can you share with us some of the projects um, or areas of focus that your department um, completes? Yeah, um, and I knew you were going to ask me this <laughs> question, so I brought some stuff. So it's like show and tell for us. Um, so we use a whole bunch of different materials because art is um, something that you can explore materials with. So depending on the course that you take, um, you know, if you take art one, two, three, or four, you're going to experiment with a whole bunch of materials. If you take a specialized class, you'll just use that material that is about that mm -hmm. course, like ceramics would be clay. Um, so I'm just going to show you a few examples, and I don't want you to get stressed out about this, but these pieces are amazing, um, but they also are pieces that kids created just like you guys, um, you know, learning how to break down their projects. Um, and they were at the same level that you were at when they came in here. And um, they just trusted in uh, the process of us breaking it down into manageable chunks for you to be able to create something. So this was a pencil drawing. Um, so you will explore pencil drawing if you are someone that loves to do that. You'll also explore charcoal drawing. So you'll explore using black charcoal, white charcoal, and these examples that I'm showing to you are not just the end all and be all of materials. We have a lot more, but this is just what I pulled for coming down here. Mm -hmm. um, you will explore colored pencil on different surfaces too. So you can see this is on um, gray paper, but colored pencil on gray paper versus white paper is totally different. So it'll be kind of cool for you to be able to experience that kind of idea. Um, I'm sure you remember using oil pastels in elementary school. I know we use them a lot in elementary school, but then bringing them up here and using them in a way that almost looks like an oil painting. Mm -hmm. um, so trying out oil pastels, then you actually will stretch your own canvas and create an actual oil painting um, of your choosing of subject. Um, and then we also have from the ceramics class, I don't know if any of you have ever seen Tangled the movie, um, the Disney movie yeah. with Rapunzel, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, so you create themed sculptures and ceramics. This is one of the projects that everyone really loves, and they created this little um, it's beautiful Rapunzel's castle, yeah. right? Um, and then we also, in the sculpture class, so sculpture um, can be interpreted in many different directions. So sculpture has to do with found objects. 
It has to do with carving into things, um, assembling things together, a lot of like recycled materials. But one of the favorite projects is to recycle and alter an old book. Um, and you can make it into any kind of theme you want. So this one was all glued together, but they made it into a library for a dragon. And That's they carved cool. into it. Um, and it was just really cool. So. Um, you get to really have a lot of fun. Some people actually have the books open up and they do sculptures and, and tear away from the pages and carve into the pages and stuff. So, so there's a lot of fun and crazy things that we do and this is just a little touch of it all and there's way more materials and crazy things that happen with us. I love it. <laughs> so as Ms. Shea said, don't panic because all of these students begin at some point. They were beginners at some point, just like you guys might be. But learning and being in the classes, you can build your skills to make creative, you know, amazing pieces like this. So um, if you're a very, you know, creative person or a very hands-on kind of person, like these might be great classes mm -hmm. for you guys to check out. So, and you better take that Rapunzel tower back with you because otherwise it might disappear. So anyway. <laughs> so um, what do you think students enjoy most about your, your courses? Um, Mrs. Mancuso sent me these questions uh, earlier <laughs> and I started to kind of just like write down what I have known that the kids have thought about the program but then I was like you know what I'm just gonna ask you guys so in class I asked the art four students and I asked a group of art two students that have experienced the program um, and I'm just looking at my little sheet here from my notes that I heard from them um, it, but art is a community really like if you take the class if you take one class, we kind of suck you in and you kind of stay with us. You just get, um, you kind of fall in love with the program and, and the people. It's a lot about the people. So a lot of them said the friends that you make along the way, mm. which is really nice because they kind of become a family as you move on from class yeah. to class together. Uh, but they said critiquing and collaboration, um, asking each other for advice. They find that like they understand each other's strengths and they'll go to someone to say like, you're really good at perspective, can you help me out? Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't always have to just be me in the room that helps everybody out. Um, and then they did say having cool pieces of art that they're proud of, that they wouldn't be able to do these things without this class and their skills that they can use later on. So it was really sweet that they said that. Mm -hmm. um, they also had advice. They said it's easier than it seems, and I'm reading this, you can look at all the pieces in the hallway and be really discouraged. So when you walk into this building, you'll see, like Miss mm -hmm. Mancuso said, all the artwork in the hallway. And you can be kind of discouraged because it's pretty amazing mm -hmm. what they, these kids create. Um, but once you've experienced it after a year, you really get the hang of it and it gets a lot, of, a lot easier. Mm -hmm. So I thought that that was really nice. And they said that your skills do build over the course of the four years that you're here. So um, not to think that you need to be Michelangelo when you walk in this building. Mm. Um, you know, you are you and you're graded on you and your efforts and your ability level. You're not compared to other people. Um, and then a lot of kids said that it's personalized, mm. it's therapeutic, and it's a positive atmosphere. So nice. We have fun in the art wing. Yeah, <laughs> I like it. And straight from the students' mouths, yeah. you're hearing it directly from them, which yeah. is which is great. So. Um, and then your courses, do they apply for any graduation requirements? How does that work? Yeah, and you know this more than me, but um, mm -hmm. they're required to have one year of an arts course. Um, so obviously the art department covers arts, mm -hmm. um, but they can also take art in other mm -hmm. um, departments like yep. industrial arts. Um, is family consumer science yep. one as well? Yeah, fashion and, design. Yep. Um, and we do usually kind of work all of those kinds of departments. We all work together really well. Um, like with fashion, we'll probably consult with each other on color schemes and things like that. Um, so it kind of all crosses over together in that kind of idea. Great. Yeah, so everyone does need one um, art course, um, a full year art course um, for graduation requirements. So yes, any courses in Ms. Shea's department would apply for that. So keep that in mind too. So you can love a class you're in and you're also getting your grad requirement done at the same time, which is good, so, mm -hmm. okay. Um, and any, are there any clubs associated with the art department? I would imagine so. Yes, <laughs> um, I don't know, you know, a lot of you probably have been over to this building at some point, um, but we, you probably noticed the murals and quotes and all kinds of things, especially on the first floor here at OA. Um, but we have art club, which is primarily an, um, mural painting club. So I know art club at uh, the middle school 
is more in the art room itself and you do creative projects inside of there. Um, but art club here at OA is more um, outside in, on the walls, basically. Mm. Um, so joining art club is um, something that a lot of the, the students that are in art two, three, and four really do um, because I do expect you to be able to paint on the walls. So I really encourage you to take art one before you get to paint on that wall mm -hmm. so you learn those skills that I'm expecting because it's kind of scary to paint on that wall. When you get that brush <laughs> up to that wall, you're kind of like, oh no. Um, and then we also have ceramics club. So you get to, you know, if you can't fit ceramics in your schedule and you really wanted to over the course of your four years, you can still come and make a project or two mm -hmm. with Mrs. Sapp, who runs the ceramics club as well. Great. Um, and I was just thinking of this while you were talking. Can you talk a little bit about um, some of the art shows that the students have participated in? I know they've also been, um, work has been displayed at, like, you know, Patriot Place. Can mm -hmm. you just talk a little bit about that? Yeah, we have um, our annual art show here at OA where everybody that takes art in the entire program has their work displayed um, in the cafeteria here. It's really cool. It kind of transforms into an art gallery. You wouldn't believe it's the cafeteria. <laughs> um, so that's usually in May. But we also have um, been invited to exhibit our work at the gallery at Patriot Place. Um, and it's pretty cool that the students here get to have a piece in an art gallery. Mm. Um, because a lot of us artists never really even get, you know, that's what you try to do is mm. get your work to be shown in a gallery. And for you to be 15, 16, 17 years old and being able to say that your work was accepted into a gallery and hung alongside the professionals is pretty cool. Um, and the gallery only invites certain schools mm. uh, and they love Oliver Ames and so they invi they've invited us back for, I think this year will be I think I've lost track at this point, um, our like eighth or ninth year That's great, there. yeah. Um, and then there's tons of competitions that we enter into as well. So um, we enter into the Amazing Emerging Artist exhibit in Massachusetts, mm -hmm. um, and that's usually juniors and seniors. And then we enter into the Scholastic Art um, mm -hmm. Awards, which is the most prestigious art competition in the country because it goes from regional to national. And if you make it to national, you go to Carnegie Hall and you actually get like a, an Olympic kind of gold medal around your neck. So we call it the Art Olympics. <laughs> um, and that one is a really huge one. Just to be selected by your teacher to put your work into that mm -hmm. is like it goes on your resume. It's pretty awesome. And then we also do the congressional art competitions. And if you uh, get best in show in that, your work will go to Washington, D.C. and hang in the Capitol, bu Capitol building for the entire year. Um, and we've won that about nine times now. Mm. So the kids, you know, you've seen the examples of the work, but it's you guys really put the work in, and it really comes back for you in the same time. Um, you get the reward for it in a way. Mm -hmm. so. so someday your work could be hanging somewhere on display for people to see, which is pretty cool. Yeah. So. <laughs> so thinking about the future, what sort of um, – uh, college majors or jobs do you find students pursuing after you know um, going through the art program here? Um, so a lot of kids want to do graphic design. It's kind of like the hot topic right now. Um, and then we also have um, illustration that a lot of kids have gone into, ceramics, um, photography, mm -hmm. like photojournalism is really interesting. Mm -hmm. Fashion design from the sketch perspective. Um, so that's why the fashion course here between the industrial arts kind of courses yes. versus um, us with learning how to draw. Mm -hmm. Makes a lot of sense. Um, shoe design, I have kids Ooh. that have majored in that. Um, and these are all careers that kids are in right now. Art education, so yep. if you want to be me. <laughs> <laughs> um, architecture, interior design. Yep. Um, I've written them all down. I'm glancing at them. Surface design, and I don't know if you guys know what that is, but surface design is um, basically everything that you see that has a pattern on it. So the pattern on your shirt, the wallpaper on your wall, um, gift wrap paper, anything like surface design is a really cool kind of thing. If you're just someone that doodles in class all the time, you can make a career out of that, which is kind of cool. Um, art therapy, mural painting, mm -hmm. um, and set design. A lot of them have gone from um, the media classes that we have here and um, have also taken their art at the same time and done a lot of like the set design and paying attention to color theory. and, and yep how to pay attention to all of that. But um, a lot of these are digital um, 
majors that a lot of the kids are going into, mm -hmm. but a lot of them require you to have basic skills in drawing and painting and visualization of light source, uh, perspective, and the only way that you're really gonna get those skills is to take a course like Art 1, which will give you kind of the boot camp of that, mm -hmm. um, and then Art 2 will give it to you as well mm -hmm. to kind of really hone those skills, and that looks a lot better on your resume than just taking graphic design. Graphic design's great, but taking all of that mm -hmm. is gonna look awesome for you. Um, I always say to the kids, I have it written here, um, if I wanted to be a video game designer, mm -hmm. one of the jo main job requirements is um, must have basic skills in drawing, understanding light, mm -hmm. understanding perspective, understanding color theory, um, and those are all things that we cover in those beginner yeah. classes. And so I was like, oh, I can go apply for that right now. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> but that's good to know because we, we always have kids who are interested in video game design. And yeah. I think they see it more from like the technical aspect. We're yeah. not realizing that the artistic component is also huge there. So right. that's good to know. Especially if you want your name over that whole video game. Mm -hmm. Then if you do the art of it and you do the coding and all of that, then it is all only your thing and you don't have to bring in others mm. to do those kinds of things too, so. Good to know. Yeah. All right. Well, that's a lot of information, a lot of great information. So thank you so much for sharing that with us today. Thank you for having me. And if you guys have any questions about the art program, you can talk to your current art teachers um, or you can certainly reach out to myself or Ms. Shea and we can, we're happy to answer anything for you. But thank you all again for, uh, for listening and uh, see you soon. Take care. Thanks, guys.